Hey guys, Sandbag here, and welcome back to Hellblade. Now this is the fifth part of my playthrough. And right now we're uh, just chasing after uh, this light that uh, Senua believes is Dillion. Uh, these uh, voices are so negative. No wonder she's having a bad time. Oh, there, she, there he is. There it is. You're imagining things. Come here. It's dead. Go towards him. Quick. Go. Run. Come on. Before Quick. he disappears. Go. 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 Can't really run. Though. Um, seems like Sen was uh, injured right now. Well, oh, I guess uh, running makes her stagger. Let's just walk. We're in the beach. We could enjoy the scenery. Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs, errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren and lonely. Sounds like her father is uh, either protective or abusive. <sighs> Ah, Dillion's over there. I'm sure he's gonna disappear. Oh! There's a cave over here. Uh, Dillion will have to wait. Senua, there will be times that you will feel alone and exhausted, like a strange little fish swimming against the tides of the big ocean. But have the faith to let go and let the tide carry you away. Because the whole ocean is your home, and it does not ask you to swim against it. Huh. Sounds like good advice there. Yeah, the more I play this game, uh, the more convinced I am that uh, we're actually in her village and she's just running around uh, killing off the remnants of the Viking invasion group. They don't look like Vikings, but since her perception is altered... There he was. Lone figure of a boy. He's there. Under the tree. So we'll play under the shade of a tree. Come on, you have to she remembers down. the first time she saw him. To her young eyes, he moved as if dancing. And the world danced with him. The gloom lifted. For the first time in years, she felt. Yeah, whenever her perception is altered, she sees things differently. So they look like monsters. The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sig. His father's hall was built around a great tree. And one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's So, touch. just like Excalibur. His brother-in-law, King Sigi, wants him, but Sigmund refuses him. So King Sigi plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. Hmm. King Sigi captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his covenant sword,
<laughs> Interesting. Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister. And she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Figures. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well... That night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. Oh, Druth. Such a good storyteller. Whoa! Huh. I guess uh, we're not ready for that one. Yeah, Druth always uh, gives us such good cliffhangers. I guess that's why I'm collecting the, the Druth stones, or the stones with voices in them. Yeah, it feels like the, the, two, the last two bosses that uh, we defeated were probably actually uh, Viking leaders of some sort. And the fact that they're so strong, uh, yeah, makes them look like super monsters. Ooh, jeez. This place is littered with uh, druid stones. As the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister, plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches him. One that is cold of heart and pure of blood. Well, they're probably uh, corrupted blood just because uh, they're the king's sons. So many long boats. Day after day. Watching from afar, she mimicked him, perfecting her own secret dance. Wishing those fleeting moments of light would stretch out to last forever. Ooh. Oh, looks like he, <laughs> yep. Sigmund's sister trades shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. Whoa, incest she gives birth to a son named Sinfrickly. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy and finds him strong and fearless, and so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. But luck is not on their side. They're captured. And Sigir has them buried alive. No, it's a trick. It's an illusion. It's not real. Don't you think it's real? You want to believe it's real, but it's a trick. Whoa. Pretty.
see her perception changes depending on on her emotional state. And I'm guessing right now she's reminiscing good old times. It's interesting. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well... I... I watched you. And... You... learnt all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dilly. I'm here for the warrior trials. Just come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. See, now she's feel feeling uh, guilt. But her will change the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. And everything turns ugly. But there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Stop! Yeah, now I'm convinced uh, this game is all about her grieving. Is that you? I'll find you, my love. I promise. And also revenge. Definitely revenge. <laughs> Stone. You met in my tree. She Ah, a fake yeah, one. Yeah, if that's the tree where they first uh, met, then uh, that means she's in the area where her village was. Yeah, she's definitely killing Vikings. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out but only to tell him the truth. That she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Senua, as there is always a heavy price to pay.
And here is the end of Sigmund's story. He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child, and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named. Gram. I also uh, feel like uh, Senua encountering Druth um, has warped her perception because of his stories about uh, the Norse gods. Oh, what's this? Whoa, is that Gram? Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Oh my god. That sound. Oh, horrible. Could old, wield the sword of the gods? Holy it's shit, I will help you. Long ago, it is said a great warrior can reforge ground by answering the trials of Odin, one for each shard. The roots of the tree of death will take you to new lands where you will face the trials. Go to the shards. Go to the shards. Go to the shards. What's the shards? Well, this seems to be a good place to uh, cut this video short. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, uh, consider subscribing to my channel and see you the next episode. Peace!